In this video, we'll demonstrate how to perform a distal sciatic nerve block, also known as a popliteal block, to anesthetize the lower two-thirds of the leg. For significant and complicated injuries to the lower leg, a popliteal nerve block, also called a distal sciatic nerve block, can be employed. This block will allow for anesthesia to the distal two-thirds of the lower leg, except for the medial aspect of the skin. So it's a great block for ankle fractures or large lacerations to the lower leg or abscesses to the lower leg. Um, so we're basically looking at the sciatic nerve in the popliteal fossa, where it bifurcates into its tibial and common perineal branches. We can perform this block in various positions. I have this model lying supine with a knee adducted at 90 degrees, or we can have them lying lateral and with somebody supporting the leg with the side that we're going to block uh, being the leg that's on top, or we can prone the patient, so depending on what, uh, what's easy enough for you. And we're going to uh, place our probe into the popliteal fossa at the back of the knee. And we're looking for our popliteal artery with our popliteal vein. And we can see those structures highlighted, and in the annotation, you'll get a better view of this image. And we're looking for those nerves bifurcating into their two branches. And we can see those nerves quite brightly here. So some top tips with this block is I'm applying something called an isotropy onto my probe. So I'm putting a little bit of tilt on. And what that is doing is following the nerve passage from deep to superficial. So that's allowing my nerves to stand out. If I put my probe on at 90 degrees perpendicular, we can see that we do not get as good a view of those two nerves. So if I bring it back, then we are going to annotate this image. So what we're going to see are vessels with our tibial nerve being the bigger of the two uh, nerves on the right hand side of the screen. The common perineal nerve branches away and moves away laterally. As we pull our probe, it's going to move onto the lateral ridge of there. Biceps femoralis runs across the left hand, across the lateral side, and then semimembranosis and semitendinosis are on the right hand side, the medial portion of the leg. So that is our approach. We're going to bring our needle in, and I would be doing this the other way around. Um, so I would be having my hands positioned better. But I'm going to bring my needle in. We can come from the lateral or we can come from the medial side of the probe. And we're basically looking to block that nerve at a position at or around the bifurcation of those two nerves. That is going to allow us to get good spread around both of those compartments, as opposed to it being as a sciatic nerve when it's going to take longer for that local anesthetic to uh, diffuse between those nerves. Because this block requires a little bit of a deeper structure, it's oftentimes better to use a longer needle. One piece of equipment that you can use to do this is a nerve block needle such as this. This allows for fine motor control of the operator on, with the needle directed toward the nerve, but the injection is performed remotely by another assistant. Using this catheter, the needle can be directed toward the nerve in the longitudinal fashion. The way this is done is by establishing a view of the nerve on the screen and then using your needle laterally to insert it and direct it toward the nerve. It's tempting to put the needle right adjacent to where the skin and the transducer meet but oftentimes advisable to drop down a few centimeters and bring the needle in in a straight path directed toward the nerve. Instilling 20 to 30 cc's of anesthetic around the nerve will result in a complete block of the sciatic nerve at this location and allow for proper anesthetic of the lower two-thirds of the leg.